This is my very first ride on this brand new 250 EXCF. I'm just doing the break-in right now and then it'll be time to change the oil and check the valves and do all the other first maintenance stuff after the hour break-in. I'll also be adding in a bunch of protective armor, an engine guard and radiator guards and bark busters to protect the clutch and, and uh, front brake lever, lever. And maybe some axle sliders. I do have supermoto wheels that will fit this bike. So I do intend to get it all set up to do the dual sport and supermoto jobs. I think before I put students on this bike, I'll probably change the throttle cam to something a little slower. The throttle response on this bike is perfectly manageable, but I know that new riders do tend to have issues with throttle control being a little bit on the sloppy side. So I will make sure to do whatever I can to make this bike even easier for a new rider to get used to and use without fear. Being as this is essentially a dirt bike with lights, it's kind of a given that it's going to end up pretty scratched up dirt bikes definitely get scratched up and plastics get broken and things like that so that makes it a, a good tool for teaching people with because once it's got the armor on it's not really gonna matter if it gets dropped these things are really tough they're pretty hard to break only thing I'm really worried about would be the license plate bracket and the rear turn signals and even that I'm not terribly concerned about. My Supermoto has the same turn signals as this bike. There's a lot of similarities between the two. And I've crashed that thing a lot of times on the track and in the woods and never had to worry too much about the turn signals. They're surprisingly resilient. But this bike, I believe, will be a fantastic option for anyone who comes from dirt riding and wants to move into riding on the road and getting their license and just doing things the right way. Or it's another great option for people who have road experience but are interested in getting into dual sport riding. It's an easily manageable bike and it's gonna be fantastic in the woods once I'm done breaking it in and get it out there. It's a little on the warm side lately so I don't think I'll be doing anything other than logging roads for the next little bit until we get some rain. But this is so far, after 15 kilometers of riding, I gotta say, this is a good bike. It's not stupid powerful, I mean it is a 250, but it's a twin cam 250 and it's not a slouch. I think it's, it's gonna be good for beginners. And definitely good for anyone who has dirt experience and wants to move to the road. And just tall people don't want to feel cramped sitting on something like the Duke or the RC. They are small bikes. This one's definitely bigger, way taller, and 
should be more comfortable for a taller person to ride than the little ones. Although the Duke is perfectly comfortable for me to ride, and I'm six feet tall. But, try to have something to fit everybody. This bike does not have ABS brakes and a slipper clutch like on the Duke and RC. But that doesn't mean the beginner can't learn to use it. The slipper clutch isn't necessary. It's, it's just an extra thing that is kind of nice to have, but definitely not required. All that not having one means is that if you downshift a whole bunch of gears, if you grab two gears and don't adjust your throttle or you're not smooth enough with the clutch, you will end up with a sliding rear wheel. The slipper clutch will prevent that. Right now this bike has very street biased tires on it. They're barely something that I would count as a dual sport tire. I do have other wheels that can be swapped out so I can easily switch over between supermoto street biased dual sport tires or dirt biased dual sport tires. But, just for tire conservation, I'm not likely to put the dirt biased tires on unless I intend to actually do some serious dirt riding. Soft rubber doesn't hold up terribly well on pavement, and aggressive knobby tires will obviously have a very small contact patch with the pavement so they really wear out fast and don't provide great grip either so until it's time to get this thing dirty it's gonna stay with the more street oriented tires be asking yourself why would I pick such an expensive dual sport motorcycle to be teaching with. There are cheaper options out there after all. Yamaha and Honda and Kawasaki all offer street legal dirt bike-ish options. But the Japanese manufacturers just can't seem to sort out how to get the weight down to a reasonable number on their dual sports. The Honda 250L weighs 80 pounds more than this bike does. And that's a big deal when you're talking about something that you probably will end up having to pick up a few times. Even though this bike does make more power than the Honda, I feel like it is a much more user-friendly bike just because of the weight. It's got great brakes, it's got good suspension. It's, a sim it's just a really good bike and I can enjoy riding this bike as well. So it's not like I, I bought it just for teaching with and it's going to be totally useless to me aside from that. 
this is a bike that I will ride when I'm not teaching. It's a dual sport that will get a lot of use in the future, but it is also user-friendly enough that new riders can hop on and learn how to ride a dual sport. So I basically just feel like as far as motorcycles go, the, the smaller dual sports, this is the best bike out there. And I don't see any reason not to use the best. It's fun for me, and it's good for my students. So if you want to learn to ride on the best motorcycles available, go to vimotorcycleschool.ca and shoot me an email and we can set up some training sessions.